Uh, my name is Urs Simler and I want to show you the news in the version Creo 10 and for those who never used Mannequin I want to show you the new uh, or the capabilities which are available let's say in the normal license of uh, Creo uh, parametric. Here is uh, the agenda. I will talk a little bit about the presenters, about the company I'm working for, Avenic. Then we're doing a little mannequin overview. We are going to have a look at uh, the mannequin use in Creo uh, 10. And of course, the most of the time we will do some live demos. At the end of the day uh, of the webinar, there is a Q&A session. Please use the question uh, panel for that reason. Okay, who is on the phone? Who is on the on the line? This is me or similar. I am a CAT simulation uh, specialist at uh, Avenic. Uh, this is my sales guy, Daniel Losley. If you need any information about uh, prices and that kind of stuff, please contact him. Okay. Mm. Daniel and I, we are working for the company Avenic. We are a reseller of uh, PTC. Therefore, our main products are PTC Creo Parametric, Elements Direct, Windchill, Madcat, and so on. We also have our uh, own tools, uh, Searchbite, Windchill Apps, and uh, Mimorizon. This is a tool for uh, watching the the wind chill, the health of wind chill, quite interesting tool. And beside that, we are working with uh, another software developer. This is uh, CAESS topology optimization, electrical clearance and creepage analysis from Elaborate, and tools from TechSoft. Now TechSoft is uh, might they change their name? And we are also uh, working with Software Factory. Uh, we have an own training center in Switzerland where you also can uh, book workshops about mannequin, about uh, Creo Simulate, about Creo Parametric, and so on. Okay, that's all with the advertisement. So let's go for mannequin. Uh, the mannequin, a very interesting tool, was invented about, I guess, 15 years ago. And uh, in the next, in the last two years, there was a, a lot of development in the mannequin environment. And by the way, the mannequin uh, capabilities are, are available in the basic Creo parametric uh, package called Essentials. And it might be interesting uh, for you because uh, every product you're developing will be used or most of them will be used by uh, humans and with the mannequin we can check uh, in, in advance if, if this is really an ergonomic uh, product we are creating. Okay, what are the capabilities of uh, that mannequin? Uh, tool. Behind the mannequin is a library and uh, starting or beginning at uh, Creo 9, the library can also be uh, customized by you. Uh, starting at Creo 10, the manipulation is getting very, very easy with the dragger here. We'll see that later on. It's very, very easy to manipulate the mannequin, bringing it to specific posture, grabbing something, uh, reaching something, really very, very easy, easy to handle. Every mannequin has uh, reach envelopes, so that gives us the possibility to, to check in advance what can the mannequin reach in a specific position. The same with the vision window, we can see what the mannequin can see, and that helps also a lot. Very new. Uh, this is not a specific mannequin feature, so you do not need a mannequin to use the vision field analysis. You just need a point. 
you can uh, see what what are the vision views of a specific point uh, and you can also use that with in addition with mirrors okay I was also talking about uh, view analysis uh, comfortable view analysis so this is also included in the mannequin uh, environment you can also validate material handling so that means simple uh, handling can be checked with specific analysis called ruler snook and and so on we will have a, a short look at that uh, capabilities okay another tip from my side uh, our uh, let's say mother company called Müller Martini they're using the old mannequin uh, capability but as an IGES file so they created just uh, six mannequins in specific postures they brought in their logo and they're placing let's say this static mannequin that's quite easy to handle and you see uh, let, let's say is, is it possible to reach for that man uh, this, uh, this this area up there so quite easy to handle it has nothing to do with mannequin it's just a simplification of the mannequin with about 150 parts to an IGES file to a static IGES file uh, the mannequin as I told you is uh, made with about 150 uh, components therefore it's like a mechanism and we can use uh, the mannequin to show some uh, specific movement we'll, sh we'll have a look at that later on in the live demonstration what are specific news in uh, mannequin in version Creo uh, 10 placement connection individual snapshots precise dragging measuring joint angles, reaching to planar surfaces, reaching envelopes and very important for uh, people who are working with wind chill in separate assemblies are available in Creo 10 and of course but this has nothing to do with the uh, mannequin this is the field reflection analysis here and custom mannequin is not a Creo 10 feature this was coming in in Creo uh, 9 okay placement connection we'll see that later on can be uh, disabled enabled that means we we can see the mannequin moving without the placement uh, connections individual snapshots are available that means we have a snapshot on assembly level here and we have snapshots here on mannequin level and we can easily combine them as I told before the dragging of the mannequin uh, became very very easy in uh, Creo 10 before it was whoa, it was a nightmare and uh, right now right now with the right mouse button you're getting a nice menu you're getting here the nice dragger uh, and now it's really uh, very very easy to move a mannequin in a specific position and maybe save that uh, poster later on quite easy uh, joint angles can be measured I will show that later on the reaching capability has been improved so in every reaching with with the forefoot or with the with the hands you can select here a uh, specific orientation that makes let's say the, the grabbing or the reaching uh, capability, capability quite easy you'll find them also in the model tree in the mannequin tree you can disable enable this those kind of uh, constraints the reach envelopes have, have been improved uh, until Creo 9 there was only one reach envelope with index finger now we are having uh, four of them and uh, with the right mouse button here it's also quite easy to show all or hide all of that uh, 
envelopes. I will show that later on live. Okay, then uh, very important for the WinChill users until uh, Creo 9, you are having uh, 150 objects. When you're looking in the library of uh, Mannequin, of course you have to install them. Until Creo 9, we, are, we can see here 190 objects. Starting at Creo uh, 10, we can see one object here. That was weighed with the capability of inseparable uh, assemblies. So much easier to uh, bring Mannequin into WinChill. The new capability of visual field reflection analysis is very easy to use. I will show that uh, later on. You can work with, let's say, a see-through capability and a reflection uh, capability. Uh, starting at Creo 9, there is a Mannequin uh, capability capability available to create customized mannequin. I will show that also later. So let's start uh, with the live demos okay, uh, of uh, mannequin. Let's go here for a new session. Here in the new session I'm having a working zone and I'd like to show you uh, those static mannequin and uh, static mannequins, I'm opening all that mannequins created by uh, IHS files. Uh, as we can see quite soon, uh, the mannequins here are made with an import feature. It's an IHS file. And just on the back, we're bringing in the logo of that customer. And here maybe a tip when we're looking at that guy here, it's not nicely shaded. I would also uh, always work with uh, the options here with uh, shading options of the model display and that would use always uh, shade very small surfaces. You'll see okay the face will change a little bit. Okay. How can we use those mannequins? We're just taking them uh, in the assembly mode and we say, okay, I want to place here a woman. Uh, she's touching a panel and I say, okay, she should be placed here and with that planes and I'm bringing her, her in the right position. I'm turning her around and it's okay. This is just normal uh, placement in assembly mode. Doing the same with a man. Okay, he's uh, trying to open something. I'm placing him also on the ground with that plane here. And okay, he's moving in here. Let's placing it here. So quite easy handling of that guy. You just see, can he reach something? Can she uh, push something? And that's all. And of course, you can do some, some logos. You can place some logos here. So this just tip how you, you don't want to use mannequin with all the, the capabilities. You just want to place a, a nice human in uh, in your scenery. Okay. Let's go for the next example. Next example is uh, moving the mannequin. Therefore, we are going uh, in a kung, kung fu session. Oh, I just wanted to uh, change the directory. Sorry. Moving mannequin, kung fu. Okay. And I'm opening this guy here. I just want to make a movie of a Kung Fu woman. Therefore, I'm going for the mannequin application here. It's not under application. It's directly on the mannequin. And I'm inserting a mannequin. Here we have the library. And of course, here I'm using a woman. 
So she's called W on the line CN. This is a Chinese woman, uh, an average woman here. I'm placing her standing. Okay. There, and I'm telling her, oh, look here uh, to that direction. Okay, I'm changing direct and everything is done. Okay, and I'm going for assembly mode and in the assembly mode I'm just dragging the woman. No, I don't want to drag her, I'm just making a snapshot of her. And I say this is the snapshot uh, standing. Okay, this is uh, saved here. Both going back for the mannequin. And here I have some uh, posters, and one poster out of my library is uh, doing a Kung Fu position. Therefore, the woman is taking the Kung Fu position. Going back for the model, for the drag capabilities, and I'm saving this position as Kung Fu. Okay, and now I'm going for the next tool. This is an application, it's called Animation. Everybody has this uh, animation uh, capability and now I can uh, create here a animation by with the right mouse button here a snapshot animation. Okay, the explode animation I don't need it anymore therefore I'm deleting it and I'm uh, creating here a so-called keyframe uh, animation. At the time of uh, zero, I want to add the standing position here. Okay, and then at the time of uh, four seconds, I'm taking the Kung Fu position. And at the time of uh, five seconds, I still have the Kung Fu position. And at the time of uh, nine seconds, I want to have the standing position again. Here, this should be four seconds. Okay. And with this uh, key keyframe uh, session here, we're just going to calculate that one. So that means right now she's going to the Kung Fu position and she's going back to the standing position. And in the playback mode here, we can save that animation as a movie, or we can have here a look at that animation. So quite easy, going from one poster to another poster. Okay, let's stop that. And going for the next example, uh, we are going for a fitness center. Okay, and I'm opening here the assembly, it's called something MC. Okay, I found it. And here we have a nice fitness equipment. The guy is already in the fitness studio. And I'm going to show you how this works here. So here I have my fitness component. This was created or assembled with mannequin uh, capabilities. And later on I brought in Uh, the mannequin, okay, and the mannequin was not just brought into the assembly and was here assembled with mechanism constraints. So I went in and I told the mannequin you have to be placed with four welded connection, left foot, right foot, left hand, right hand to the uh, fitness equipment. So it's welded and I brought in additional constraints in order not to move the mannequin to the left and right side. These are those two planar 
connections here. That means the mannequin cannot move to the left or right side with his uh, two bodies here, which are in green. So that means now, if I am going with this assembly to my mechanism, and I'm applying here a motor, this motor here is a sinus on the profile details we can see that that means now here the cylinder is moving uh, in specific position and the mannequin must move with that but with that one because it's connected here here and here and beside that it's also blocked here let's say those those four axes here are blocked also in order not to move the mannequin to the side so that means with that three no five uh, motors the mannequin will move so I'm going here for a uh, mannequin analysis here I created those analysis oops it's that one sorry down there this analysis here and I can run it okay and now the mannequin is starting to move and of course as in uh, animation before we can create later on some movies of this human here quite easy combining mechanism with mannequin because mannequin is let's say more or less a mechanism with 150 bodies okay let's go for next example next example uh, is the mannequin the custom mannequin uh, this is available in Creo uh, 9 and here I'm just opening the mannequin uh, directly I'm going here for the mannequin library and I can uh, take this M custom this is a customized man and there is also a woman woman custom I'm taking the man here okay I'm opening the man okay we can see that guy and I want to create a person which has to say who has the same size as I have so therefore I'm going for the mannequin capabilities and here only with the customized mannequin we can edit uh, this guy so I'm going for edit mannequin specific tables are coming up and I can change the dimension of that guy let's move the guy here and I want to create a man with a with the size of 173 centimeters this is my size okay so you see it's getting a little bit smaller I have a weight of 71 kilograms and my size of chest is about uh, 93 I guess okay the waist is uh, a little bit bigger 95 I'm a cylindrical guy more or less oh not that much 95 okay it's changing right right now okay from the side it looks like that and I want to change here the type maybe to 65 millimeters that we really can see a change here so imagine that's me here and I can easily uh, let's say save uh, that guy I can add here some attributes age group I'm nearly 60 country CH for switch Switzerland maybe I'm from the database some thing like that and I guess I'm about the 15 percentile I'm quite small here I just can go in and say okay save as the mannequin will be will get some additional positions here and now I can save it here as uh, 
me. Okay, it's saved in the working directory. Of course, you can move them over to the mannequin uh, directory and here I can uh, place me on the ground. I'm going here for uh, mannequin capability, insert mannequin. I'm looking for my working directory and here I can add me in a standing position maybe to that direction. And of course right now this is me. I have some uh, vision cones here. I can apply some postures like Kung Fu and everything is okay. So very, very easy to create customized mannequins. This is available in Creo 9. Let's go for next example. Uh, in the directory here we have a helicopter. I think it's this one. It's not a complete helicopter, it's just let's say the the seats and the panels of that helicopter. Okay, just want to show you first how we can place a mannequin sitting here on a seat. Therefore I'm taking that mannequin, I'm hiding it and I want to place here another guy uh, to the seat. Going here for my library, inserting a mannequin. This is a man, an average man from NASA or from the NASA database. Here we see all the information. Okay, I'm placing him. He is coming to the assembly standing in the standing position and I wanna let sit him. Now I can select the uh, reverence. Okay, it's here that uh, situation where I wanna place him and he should look to the front uh, plane here. So it's quite easy to add a mannequin and of course later on you're taking the mannequin, you're moving uh, them with all that capabilities. Okay, this is how you uh, place uh, those mannequins. I'm going back for my uh, main assembly. I'm deleting the guy again and I'm bringing in the pilot. I'm unhiding uh, the pilot. Okay. Uh, here a new functionality in Creo 9 we can measure some angles. So we're just selecting two segments and we can see the angle and we can of course we can uh, save them. As I showed before there are some uh, vision cones available. This is not a new uh, capabilities. I'm going here for vision cones on which guy or which mannequin. This one here. It's showing me the um, the vision cone itself. The vision cones are uh, quilts. I can take one of them quilt and I can hide it so we just can see uh, the cones where the mannequin can have a precise look at uh, something. And I can uh, look at something. This mannequin should look to the screen here, to that point. So he's changing his view and of course I can see here what he can see right now in a separate window. It's like that and of course if I'm changing the target point also my view will change. Here also new capability, it's creating a constraint and this constraint here I created it right now will be available here in the mannequin uh, tree. Here we have the mannequin constraints and this line of sight uh, look at was created and with the right mouse button I can remove, disable uh, those constraints and it's quite easy to handle them because it's in the mannequin 
uh, tree. Okay, then let's go for for the woman here. I think the woman doesn't sit very comfortable, therefore I'm applying a new posture to her. She's sitting here with the legs crossed left. We have some micro, macro and micro predefined positions here, or so-called posture, and we can create our own postures. This is also quite easy. I'll show that later on. I tell her now, let's take this uh, posture here. It's changing her posture. And uh, of course, now I can manipulate her starting from that post. Maybe I want to change her arm in that direction, going for the next segment, doing something like that. Also on the right mouse button, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, uh, capabilities available, which makes dragging very, very easy. Okay. And uh, also here uh, is available when I'm going for the mannequin in the mannequin tree. You see here our mannequin constraints and I can, let's say, disable some constraints. If it's not disabled here, if I want to move her to that direction, it's not, it's not possible. If I'm disabling that constraint, I can move her. Or I can, let's say, disable here the left forefront, forefoot. That means right now if I'm taking that one. Left, oh, this was oh, wait, right forefoot. Let's take it maybe to that direction. Now I can move her. Okay, and for me also very interesting. Control set is available. I hit control set, I hit control set, control set again, and you see also in the mannequin tree everything is coming back. So really the handling compared with Creo 7, 8, 9 is much, much, much better. Okay, then uh, if you have maybe a special position here, we can apply some posture. Now we can say some posture, sorry. I will be asked which mannequin you want to uh, save, uh, this one here. Okay. And then you will be asked, what's the name of that poster? Maybe Q, 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 Q. And at the end of the day, you can drag a window and, and the screenshot will be made of that uh, window. And of course, if you're going back for applying poster, we will see here, I think it must be that window here, more or less, that or that. Uh, Q, 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 this one. And so I can uh, take maybe that QQQ position to that guy here. And now he's in the same position as the model. Okay, then let's have maybe a, a look at this uh, different uh, uh, post snapshots here. Here we have the mannequin uh, snapshots of the pilot here we have the scene snapshots and here we can go maybe oh let's let them see it as before just applying this post tree here and everybody gets in the initial position or here we have a not a position or here we have for all mannequins a specific position of course i can, can uh, manipulate uh, this kid here on that size i'm just uh, taking here Another snapshot, uh, it's called sitting right. Okay, he's moving over and now he's playing. And his brother is further down. This guy here, uh, mannequin snapshot, is also playing with him. Okay, and of course at the end of the day we can go to the scene snapshot and we are creating a new snapshot. Super. Okay. And everything is done. Okay. Then uh, the mannequin can also, let's say, grab 
something or carried something, I would show that uh, maybe in the uh, mode here. Okay, now I have a better overview. I'm activating the guy. And let's say in the uh, assembly mode here, I'm just assembling a helmet. Unfortunately, I do not have a helmet. I just have an Italian cap. Okay, and this Italian cap has some interface, so a coordinate system. And I will place that coordinate system to that guy, to the coordinate system in his uh, skull. Therefore, I just can go in and say, okay, I'm looking for a coordinate system here. It's called underline COG, and I'm just double-clicking it, and the uh, uh, cap will be placed. Okay. I'm activating the main assembly, and in mannequin itself, I easily can manipulate here. That guy and you see, do not drag too fast. The head, in. the cap is moving also. Okay. Of course, the same can be uh, made with uh, tools here. I'm going for back for my model, and here in the woman mannequin. Here I can see there is a, oops, where is it? There is a hammer, I just uh, was hiding it. I'm showing the hammer again. And the hammer was also placed here with the coordinate system to the hand. Of course, it would make sense to apply a special posture for her right hand. Uh, this one here should be added to that hand here. Now her hand is grabbing uh, the hammer. And of course, if I am maybe take that segment here, I'm moving that guy, come on. The hammer will also move in. Just make it very slowly. OK. There's a capability to use some uh, additional tools or caps or what else. So that's more or less all I wanted to show you from mannequin itself. So let's go for the mannequin analysis capabilities. I'm changing again the assembly. Takes a while. Ah, uh, this is uh, 05, Mannequin Analysis, and I'm opening the workstation here. Again, as I mentioned before, there are several snapshots available for those mannequins, for those digital humans here on the scene level and here on mannequin level itself. Okay. That means I have here maybe a position of the Italian guy. Okay, he's working there. And here we have uh, some specific uh, positions of the woman here. Okay. She can stand here, she can stand here. But now I want to make sure when, when this woman is in that position, is she standing comfortable? So we have here some comfortable analysis uh, capabilities. That means I can take her, I can search for a comfortable file. You can create your own comfortable files. And in that comfortable bar, just inside it standing uh, with some values, is this angle comfortable here? Let's look at that knee. Right now, for that position, it's not very comfortable. For that elbow, I'm taking also that one. It seems to be more comfortable, and I can compute 
what's the overall comfortable index for those two uh, objects here or I'm selecting here all that objects and I can compute a whole over uh, score for that guy or for this this woman here okay there are some special uh, ruler analysis available that means okay with the right arm when the woman is uh, moving something is that possible so two kilograms are acceptable with the right hand but uh, more than two kilograms might uh, give some problems here so we have to investigate okay this is just let's say a so-called ruler analysis and here for some additional task analysis we have some additional uh, capabilities I'm going here for the woman and I want to make her uh, lifting uh, from that position it must be a global position here to that position she should lift here a box with about 15 kilograms and here we can also see with this uh, Neosh analysis is this is this possible I'm getting information about the lifting index so very very special analysis for some manual tasks here okay that the capabilities about uh, mannequin analysis of course here we see that uh, additional analysis have been available Let's go for the last task. We are going for the visual field reflection analysis capabilities. Again, we have to change our directory. So, and I'm opening car. Okay. And in that car, there is a mannequin sitting. It must not be a mannequin sitting there. You just need a point. So I created here a point, and I will use that point here. It's that one here in the middle of his eyes. I want to use that point to uh, do some uh, visual field analysis. So this is a very new capability and it's also available in the let's say uh, basic version of a Creo parametric visual field analysis I'm doing a such such an analysis so my uh, center point is uh, this point here in the middle and I'm gonna look through the windscreen it's creating here some surfaces I can extend those surfaces to 250 millimeters and it's also possible to use some obstructing objects I'm going here for that guy here I say okay what happens if that one influences my view of course I'm getting here a specific surface or a divided uh, view of field field of view okay I can accept that one I'm going to hide it and I'm doing the second analysis here again this guy here should look with reflection from his uh, eye point here to that surface left uh, mirror and I have the capability here to use some rotation axis this rotation axis is maybe 7 degrees taking them to 11 degrees okay and it's looking like that I'm extending the surface to 250 millimeters and I can add here a new cone again let's go maybe to that one here I want to use that uh, 
screen with a ref reflection, sorry, that was the wrong thing, and I'm taking here those two axes, and the two axes are now 7 degrees, and minus 23 degrees, extending it to 250 millimeters, yeah, that's, that's my view, maybe this one has to go down by 2 degrees to 5, and I'm saving. Uh, these cones. I'm hiding uh, these cones again and I'm changing right now the, 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 the surface of the left mirror. I'm just bringing in, you see this curved surface and I want to do here also the reflection analysis starting at that point again going to that surface uh, taking here the axis, uh, let's also take here uh, 7 and 11 degrees, okay, extend it, okay, and now my field of vision looks like that. What happens right now if I'm changing the curvature of that uh, mirror surface? Quite easy to perform that, we're going for the surface. The surface was created with uh, freestyle and in the freestyle environment. I take this point here and I'm moving that point backwards to that shape. Okay, and right now I'm just hitting regenerate. And of course, within seconds, we can see the new behavior of the new mirror. And of course, here I can unhide those cones. As you saw, very, very easy handling for visual field analysis. That brings me, yes, I think that brings me to the end of the live presentation, so I'm going back here for my uh, PowerPoint. Before I'm doing that here, I mentioned at the beginning, uh, there is also a uh, uh, YouTube channel from my side available. So if you want to maybe download later on uh, those webinars, you can, you can go for that one and uh, use that one. This is an old webinar here. Okay, just subscribe for that one. And let's go back for my PowerPoint presentations. Now we have questions. Please, please use the question panels because we are more than 20 people in the, uh, the webinar and I'm trying to answer your questions. Hmm. Question is, uh, we are using Creo Illustrate. Is there any possibility to link a separate mannequin model into a C3DI uh, file, for example, managed as model in PLM Windchill, or do we have to export static mannequins from Creo? Hmm. Hmm, good question. I would say I cannot answer that uh, directly. I will check that. I mean, if, if you're doing a static uh, mannequin, as I showed at the beginning, yes, that will work. But if that works, let's say, with the mannequin library objects, I'm, I'm not sure. So I have to, to check that. Then are there any additional questions? I cannot see any more questions. Okay. I'm waiting five seconds more. No more questions. No, then we 
uh, are coming to the end. I would like to thank you for attending uh, this webinar. I hope it was interesting. Uh, as I told you, as I told you, in about uh, two or three hours, you'll get a, a link where you can watch the movie. If you need uh, the movie itself, uh, I will convert it and I can send it to you directly. Please send me an email in that uh, case. Uh, if you also need maybe the, the PDF of the PowerPoint presentation, no problem. But in about uh, two or three weeks, I think the webinar will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. Therefore, thanks a lot for your time. It was a pleasure for me to present and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. Uf Italuaka. Arrivederci. A bientôt. Auf Wiedersehen.